Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Belinda and this is Visualized NZ. I'm recording this ahead because I am going to be away on holiday while you're watching this. Whoops, I left the TV remote on the desk, just let's get rid of that for now. Um, so I am doing Roxy's weekly challenge and I've just watched week three's video from Rachel. She's already done week four, uh, so I'm a little behind. That's okay, because you're going to be watching it, you know, a few weeks behind anyway. So let's get on with week three, shall we? So I've watched Rachel make hers, and um, fun, fun project. What she did was just beautiful. I'll link her in the description box, in case you haven't seen her. Uh, and she's making um, tall, skinny, effectively a coin envelope, but we'll just call it an envelope. And I've chosen out some pages to work with. I'm hoping they're not too tall and I've got four different types of paper so I've got this um, out of a book on furniture making so it's got patterns and I thought that could be quite interesting I have got this very very thin paper from an encyclopedia and I thought I wonder how it would go making thin ones so I thought I'd give that a go I've got a sort of more regular sized page here from a 1930s book. And then I've got a page out of a magazine, which I've already trimmed down quite a bit because it was the biggest page out of them all. And I thought it'd be nice to see what a bit of colour, it's shiny or shinier than obviously than the book pages. See what that looks like, just to, to experiment with the different looks and the different results that we might get. So firstly, it is just folding in the sides, so they overlap in the middle. And they don't need to overlap by a lot, but enough so that you can actually glue them together. So this is going to be a very skinny one. And then a little bit at the bottom, which will close up your envelope. And then a bit at the top, and this will be the flap. So I'm going to fold all these pages first and then we'll do the trimming of the bits that we don't need. So that's going to be like that. So that's that's not a bad size. It's very narrow. Um, and that's perfectly all right because that is the point of these is to be tall and narrow uh, for fun. You know, it's nice to make different shaped things for our journals. It makes it interesting both for ourselves and for whoever uses the journal. So there we go, fold it in half, overlapping in the middle. Uh, whoops, that was more than I need to fold up at the bottom, but I will, it's, these are tall, so I am going to fold up quite generously because I don't think I want them too tall for my page. So I'm just going to grab out, a, this is be sort of similar to a typical journal page. Yeah, so I think that's, that's fine just to keep an eye on that I'm not making them too tall for my journals because then that would be a problem so how is everybody today um, I'm not sure what day this is going to air yet I will worry about scheduling that after I've finished filming um, so yeah it will be sometime during the week I guess um, we're away from the 13th to the 17th, I think it is. Um, so there's a you know a good six days, although I don't typically have a video up on the Saturday. So a full week where I won't be here doing videos. And the week before that, my husband is also on holiday, which is actually next week. And I've got a, a course that I need to go to on one of the days. And even though the rest of the week we're going to be home, I want to make sure that I'm spending that quality time with my husband. So I'm also trying to record ahead for next week as well. There's plenty going on. And I might still do some recording next week. I don't know, but I want the option of just having that time with my husband. You know, so that we can go out and do something if we want to. Right, this um, book page here from the like furniture making book I also trimmed off because it was quite tall 
a shame I've got to lose the um, the writing there. It's a very, very cool writing. But never mind. I've got plenty of other pages where I can enjoy and use that writing. So I think we're going okay for size. Yep, I'll fit on a page. This is quite a heavier, heavier, thicker paper. Certainly in contrast to the encyclopedia page. It's very noticeable difference and so as you can see as I'm doing this there's no right or wrong measurement for this there's no measurement at all just as long as they overlap in the middle so you can glue them together because you don't want your envelope coming apart or undone or things flying out the side because they're not held in right so, and then Hold that down a bit more than I think the other one I did. Just make sure I end up with some different sizes. Okay, and our magazine page, last but not least. So I think this could look quite cool. With the colour and lovely landscape on it. And it's going to be wider as well so I'm going to fold it up a generous amount at the bottom like so because it's otherwise it's going to be way too tall and down about there so this is going to be a, a sort of not quite so skinny not quite so tall Right, now let's get to trimming. So you've probably done these heaps of times before. We open it back out and you trim off the four corners. So leaving an angle, you're cutting into the corners, the corner of the creases where the creases meet, and add an angle on each side. So that when you close it back up, it doesn't catch on anything. In on an angle towards the corner and the angle you're doing is from the bits that are left behind if you can see that so you don't take the angle from the bit you're cutting off into the corner you're taking it from the bit that's remaining and down to the corner and the same in the bottom you're taking it from the bit you're leaving attached in towards the corner so that when it folds back up, it folds beautifully, doesn't catch anywhere. So you do the same at the top. And you could uh, match these up so that the angle on the flap is the same when you're working on the top one. Uh, Rachel folded them together to make sure the angles were the same. I'm not worried about keeping them the same. Um... Although, we'll see how it looks. I can always change my mind. This sort of fun little scraps. They might make some nice collage bits. Right, it's so folding up like that. And then our top folds down like so. Cool. Do like that. I think it's got a nice texture and colour to work with there. Right, so I'm just going to whip through and do all of them, and then I'll glue them. So a bit of a mess make. I'm trying in these the weekly challenges from Rachel at Roxy Creations. I'm trying to do six each time. So it will depend on what it is as to whether I actually achieve that or not. But that's my intention, so that I've got a nice, good lot of ephemera already done when I need it whoops that was a very curved um, <laughs> curved line there I bet I can't match it on this side because my scissors are curving the opposite way that's all right that's fine okay, then fold it up 
and sometimes you've got to go in and take a little bit extra because you haven't quite angled it properly um, so you just just do it as you need to if you find that it's not quite shutting properly if it's catching somewhere just go and give it a little further trim up until it closes nicely so hopefully when you're watching this I'll be like sitting and soaking in a hot pool or something <sighs> I can't wait we haven't been away for so long and I know my husband's really really hanging out for a break from work It'd be lovely if we could go away for a couple of weeks, but we, we can't. We can't afford that, so we're just going away for a week. will be perfectly lovely. And we still get some time at home to be with our kids, as in the cats. Larry, our kids. You know, do a few home jobs. Bit boring, but, you know, stuff that gets left behind because daily life is so busy normally. And it is good to get time to do those things. And so I've got a course on, um, it's a digital marketing, marketing course. It goes for three months and it starts uh, a week this Wednesday. So not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday and during the first week of our holidays. So I've got to go into the venue for three hours on the Wednesday and the first part of the course which I'm looking forward to I'm also very nervous about because um, I know nothing about marketing really and when I signed up for it the beginners class was already full and so they put me in one of the more advanced classes and I'm like Eek. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine but you know <laughs> It's like, I could be just a tad out of my depth. But, just have to learn fast, won't I? Right, two more to do. So that's the one side of, you know, having your own little business. I love the creative side. I love doing videos for you guys. I love all that. But I really dislike the marketing side. You know, trying to put myself out there, trying to do all the social media posts and make myself sound so wonderful. Because I honestly don't think I'm that wonderful. I just love what I do. Um, so, yeah, and I know nothing about what marketing I should be doing or how to do it or what's the most effective. Or And part of me doesn't really care. Is that awful to say? <laughs> I don't. I just want to do my thing. But. You know, I live in the real world and we've got to take the good with the bad and do some of those things we don't actually want to do or like doing or even know how to do. So that's going to be my learning curve this year is doing this marketing course and learning how to do the things that I don't really want to be doing. So wish me luck. <laughs> I'm sure it will be fine. I like learning so... I just look at it as a learning opportunity and I'm learning something new and it should be all good as long as I can keep up with everyone else in the class. So it's only uh, one session a week, that a uh, fortnight, sorry. Every two weeks I've got to go to the venue and do a half day and then the week in between there's a Zoom. So it's not too intensive. Like, it's not heaps of time. Um, so it's only, the Zoom call's only like an hour. So that week in between, it's only an hour out of my day. But then I also am required to watch 40, a minimum of 40 videos online as part of it as well. Uh, from the provider. So that's a bit intensive. I've started, I've watched two. I've got a wee ways to go. And they have to be watched before the end of the course. So I've got three months basically to watch another 38 videos. Oh my goodness, I'm sitting here going, oh gosh, I need to schedule in a couple more to watch. Um, so that I'm not trying to like watch four, 38 in two days or something crazy at the end. 
Right, so let's get to gluing these. I'm just going to use my tacky glue um, because it's going to be easier. I'm hoping it will go okay on the really thin encyclopedia pages. It doesn't buckle too much. So just a bead of glue along the edge of our two long flaps. And don't take it too close to the edge so that you don't end up gluing your envelope shut. Because that would kind of defeat the purpose really. So there we go. So just, you know, give it a, a lift to make sure it's not sticking down. You can pop your ruler down inside just to release it if it's sticking a little bit. And then just let it sit, you know, popped up a little bit so it can dry without sticking itself down. Right, so we're just gluing the two long bits together in the middle and the bottom flap. So the top bit we want to leave open so that we can, of course, put things in and out of our tall skinny envelopes so first one done next so this goes pretty quick oops blue bubble more blue bubbles again just checking i'm not gluing it shut and then our bottom flap. Now these are, are not going to be glued down to the page. So in factual fact, we won't lose that writing that's on the bottom there. When we, or when whoever has it in their journal turns it over, they'll still see that cool writing. And I think that looks really cool. With all that uh, detail on it. All right. Let's do our, our, what am I searching for? Magazine page. That's what I'm trying to find. I had to go through about seven different paper options in my head before I found the right one. It's a Monday morning. I'm filming this on a Monday morning. So that's, yeah, that's where my head's at this morning. Searching for the words. Magazine page. I've just got heaps and heaps of things running through my head. So much I want to get done today. Lots of things I need to do. Preparations, videos, you know, all the things. All right, so it's that one. And then once we've glued these together, then I'm going to decorate them up a little bit. And hopefully we're going to have time for all this. I'm trying to, you know, speed along. Rachel can get these done in 40 minutes. So... I'm not setting myself a time limit, but I should be able to knock out a few in an hour or less, shouldn't I? Well, I would hope so. That's my goal. I can always aim for these things. Right, I love gluing. It's so quick and easy. And you can turn from just having a page with an unusual shape that you've just cut it into into actually being an object, an envelope. So it's kind of really satisfying as well. Oh, it's super thin this paper, so it will be interesting to see how it goes. Of course, with decorating it up, it's going to add some weight to it, to some support. But I probably wouldn't put anything too heavy inside of it that's likely to break out the sides. It's not fragile paper um, in terms of its age, although it's not young. Um, but, you know, if you put something with a sharp edge, you know, like a cardstock or something, then it could bust out the side with just the weight of it on the thin paper. So, yeah, I'd want to keep whatever I put inside these thin book page pot, uh, envelopes on the lighter side. Maybe a folded sheet of coffee dyed paper or something would be the go. Rather than a tag or a journal card. Right, so there we go. We have glued six together. So I don't think we need our journal page. I'll pop that aside. So we've got 
should have six, I think. So two, four, six. Yes, we have six of them. Oh, I like them. They are cool. Aren't they fun? Right, so decoration. What would we like to decorate them? I'm just going to take the first one. Um, and maybe, I mean, it seems maybe a bit silly to put book page on top of book page. But really what I'm looking for is different in colours for a start. So there's a difference in the colour. Uh, difference in font. Uh, font, the type of font used, the size of the font used. And what's on the page as well. So here we've got text and here we've got a lot of numbers. So I'm going to grab out my blue page here, get rid of this sticky pages oh. uh, where's my glue stick I think this one's almost out actually I didn't grab a new one um, which side do we like don't think it matters I think they're pretty much similar on either side so let's just stick with our original side that we had I'm just going to randomly stick a feature bit of something on. Um, actually, on this one, I might go with this as well. Oops, did not mean to do that. Never mind. Sometimes your random tearing goes a bit haywire. I quite like how it's got wonder here. So I think I might leave that showing. That one. Okay, we need something else. Pop that aside. How about a bit of music? Um, how's the colour? That's a bit too similar to that might be okay here let's try it okay, I probably want it a bit narrower than that take off the blank bits yep need it narrower still yep Let's go with that. Certainly helps strengthen it up a little bit. Okay, I think, yep, that's too close in colour for that. So let's grab something else. Oh, this has got some lovely colour on it, some lovely yellowing. take off the top it's got lovely color on it but it's also torn so I'm going to yep get rid of that top bit that was damaged <clears throat> oh, excuse me I think I need a drink it's getting a bit dry you stick that right up on the edge there I love that aging on that paper it's really pretty okay so done those ones so we've got two more to do and these are both the furniture one so let's go with a bit more of this yep like that um, Eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Spend the next 10 minutes deciding which side of the paper I want to glue down and which I want up. That sounds like something I would do. That bit. Right, now I really, really love this detail. So I want to be a bit careful how I put something on it. 
this music paper is a little bit different in colour. Don't want to cover it all up. Maybe we just want to keep very um, minimal in the decoration on this one. So we don't lose all that pretty, pretty detail. So I'm going to lose a bit here on the leg of the table. It's a sewing table, this um, diagram, sewing table. Right, now I've got a complete mess here. I've got scraps of paper everywhere. That's okay. That's just how we roll while we're doing a video. And how I roll just when I'm crafting normally. Right, just wetting my throat a bit there. Okay, let's look at what we want to put on these. So I'm going to just lay them out so we can have a little look-see. Can you see all those in the camera? Oops. And I probably want to distress around these, but I can easily do that um, afterwards. So, let's look at flowers for a start. So these are from Artsology. Hey, Georgie. Georgie's just appeared. He's been in the cat bed in the bedroom all morning. Maybe we want to put that one there. So I'm not going to do flowers on them all, I don't think. Do we want a bigger flower? Maybe we want a bigger flower. Do we have a bigger flower? Something like that, maybe. Or some of these have printed um, because my when I printed them out, my printer had a bit of an issue and didn't print the cyan. So some of these aren't true to what they are supposed to be, like this one. It's, the colour's a bit funky. But they're still pretty if you don't know that there's... And this one as well is one that printed wrong. Um, if you don't know, then they're still pretty. And they've got that vintagey look because they're more yellowy. Okay. So don't judge the kit on necessarily on what my printing looks like because I had printer issues. They are truly beautiful and they do print beautifully. Okay, maybe we want to go with some birds. We need a biggish, biggish bird that's not too wide. Not too wide, too wide. Bird could be cool on that one. Is that the right bird though? That is the question. Um, oh, there's a colourful. Oh, I like that. Can you see that? Love that. It looks cool. Uh, so these are all cut out of books or magazines. Mostly books, like field guides for birds. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful illustrations. I pick them up whenever I see them, and I don't see them very often um, because they're just a wealth of material to fussy cut. Ooh, what about you, Mr. Owl? Hmm, a bit big. Oh, maybe there. Yeah, let's put you there. So. Well, you would actually fit there. Yes, you would fit there. And then we still get that lovely writing. Okay, so you can go there. So we need something narrower for there. Do we want another bird or do we want a flower? Don't, don't want a black bird. I want something a bit more colourful. Oh, you're a lovely bird, but you're way too big. <laughs> You're not going to fit. How about these guys? Oh, I like those guys. Okay, they do need a bit more cut out, but that's okay. Won't take too long. Right, do I want to layer anything else up behind them first? Let's have a wee look at labels, maybe. Because we might want to put labels underneath as opposed to on top. 
looking at the colours that we've got going on, and I've got my book here of various labels from various people, so I'll tell you which ones I'm using if I use any out of here. That might be quite nice. Yep, I like that. So that's an Artsology label. Um, oh, fiddling around. That's another Artsology label there. Worm tea. That kind of fits with a bird, doesn't it? This is uh, from Nine of Crones. <laughs> That's fun. I like that. Okay, Mr. Owl, do you want a label? You're quite big. Maybe we want a small label. So these ones I'm looking at here are from Shabby Cottage Studio. Oh yes, that looks good there. Okay, so we've got one more there and one here maybe. Something like that. Or do we want to retain this bit of detail down here? We could go up the top with our flower. Come down there with our label. Again, an artsology one. And then... Thinking maybe something slightly different and these ones I've got in here are from printables by Marty Joe the apothecary labels rose cold cream yep let's go with that because there's roses in that in the floral okay let's move these out of my way and then we'll get to gluing and then see if there's any final finishing touches we want to do apart from distressing, which I can do at any stage. I'll probably distress one just so you can see how it looks. And I'm not distressing any of the elements that I'm putting down. It goes about there. Hopefully my glue stick holds up for this. That doesn't run out where I've got them stored is not easy to get to while I'm recording. The danger of moving the camera, bumping things, causing an avalanche because they're up on a shelf right behind me. Right, it's that one. I can always tacky glue. It's always my tacky glue. Oh, my page is already getting sticky and gross. Let's maybe put that over to the side a little bit. Oh, we're almost down to the plastic. This way. Oops. Oh, I've still got to cut you out, don't I? Yes. 
I don't want all that white in there, so I definitely need to cut it out before I stick it on. All right, now, so where did I want you? About there. Right. Change out this page because it's getting really sticky. Actually, I'm going to take a glue this one as well because it's um, on a glossy page. It's a lot thicker. So I think it'll be fine with the tacky glue. And it's shiny as well. So sometimes I don't trust a glue stick on shiny paper. That it will stay put. Oh, what a beautiful owl you are. You are just a beautiful bird. Gorgeous. Right. And this is not quite glued down properly, so fix that up first. Sorry, I've gone quiet. I'm busy thinking. I'm just enjoying putting all these things down and watching them just become all pretty. I have no idea how we're going on time. But never mind, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I'm sure we're not too bad for time. I hope. you about there I think and again this is shiny paper it's a bit heavier so I'm gonna tacky it down oh I need to say that more don't I <laughs> instead of saying I'm gonna use my tacky glue here I'll just say I'm gonna tacky it down I bet I forget in the next video is a beautiful bird I'm not sure what sort of bird it is but he's got this glorious long tail I think I've put him on slightly crooked but who's gonna care I mean he's just pretty beautiful bird right now you guys so I think I'll stick the label down first and then I'll cut you out This is um, a map label from Artsology. The, uh, all the Artsology labels that I've shown you, they're all from the same kit, same digital kit. It's really good value. You get a lot of labels and lots of different uh, patterns and colours for your money. So I highly recommend. Now hopefully my knife is not too dull. Otherwise it will tear up. And drag across the paper and cause it to rip rather than cut it. Oops, I missed up there. Didn't take it right. My fingers are sticky. They keep sticking to the paper. I don't like the feeling. I just want to wipe, go and clean my fingers. But I'm doing a video. I can't. Not very easily anyway. So I leave these bits in so that the uh, birds don't get damaged while they're rattling around in my container, in my little box. They're very easy for them to get caught up on each other and tear off a leg or a branch or something. So I just leave these bits to do to cut out when I need to use the, the image. And they don't take too long. Certainly the majority of the time is spent cutting around the birds to begin with, which I definitely do not do on camera.
so I've still got the majority I've got two books of these field guides I've got a South African one and I've got an Australian one and I've barely touched either of them like there's still so many pages to cut up just so if you ever come across one in a thrift store in a secondhand bookstore or something like they are well worth picking up for a few dollars uh, because you'll get more birds than you can actually use. But that's fun, isn't it? Having options. Having different birds and different colours and different artists that have done the birds because they're generally um, uh, sketches, uh, watercolour. I think the one, two I've got are both watercolour. Um... So yeah, they, they are beautiful. Whoops, I've got glue happening everywhere. What a mess. Where's the tissue? Do a bit of mop-up. Well, they're going to stick, aren't they? Because there's plenty of glue on there. It's on those fine little bits. Right, there we go. So, do we want to add anything else? How are we going for time? Oh, we're cracking along there, but we've we've hit the 40-minute mark. So we're actually doing quite well compared to Rachel's time frame, which is interesting. It's good to know, actually. She makes everything look so easy and simple, and it's just, she's very inspiring to watch. Right, so do we feel like we need anything else? You know what? I think I like them as is. You need a little bit. I might need to add a bit of extra glue to him, but it might be just that I hadn't pressed it down enough. So we'll see. If he pops up, I will just add some more glue under the edge. So let's add a bit of distress to say this one just so you can see how it turns out and this one is the um, the smaller book page that I used uh, it's a book from the 1930s and I only know that because of the inscription in the front because it's not actually got a publication date on it but the inscription says 1934 uh, when the person was gifted the book so the oldest it will be, or sorry, the youngest it will be, will be 1934. Okay, and distress the back too, because it's not going to be glued down, it will be seen. You could decorate the back as well. Rachel didn't decorate the back of hers. Um, I'm undecided whether I will or not. Possibly a bit of writing paper uh, might be nice, so you can actually write on the back as well. Um, just get the top of the opening there um, but you don't need to if you don't want to um, these thinner encyclopedia, encyclopedia pages I might actually put writing paper on the back just because that's going to further strengthen them up but sometimes you want really nice thin things that aren't going to bulk up your journal too much so this is a really good option it feels really nice it's a very very lightweight even with you know once something is put in it it's still going to be relatively lightweight compared to this one which even though it's smaller is so much heavier like there's there's definitely a very noticeable weight difference in those and I think they both look cool I think they all look cool actually I think they're lovely so journal page back so as Rachel said in her video you can hinge them over top of your page here and clip them in or you could actually glue the flap down and have it as a flip up and then you slide things in and out. Could be a little awkward so I'd probably just clip it or you could just clip it you know not have the flap over the page but just like clip it to the side of the page. You could even tuck it into a pocket or a tuck spot or something as well. Uh, 
put something in it and then tuck it in. Now Rachel did m start making bases of tags to go in. I'm not going to do that in this video though. I'm quite happy with those as they are. I'm just going to ink round them. And that will be my cute, cute little tall, skinny envelopes. Aren't they fun? I think they're fun. And they're a lot of fun to make. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, do pop along, check out Rachel's channel and her makes, her ideas. Uh, because these that's where I'm getting these ideas from. And participate in the challenge too. Or if you don't feel like doing that, just grab some stuff and make along with me. Either way, it's all cool. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day everybody. Bye.